Welcome to Breaking Ground. I'm your host, Devin Kolka. On this show, we meet with industry leaders in the construction, real estate, and design fields. Today's guest is Sean Cronin. Sean is a leader as a tax attorney, and we're going to find out some interesting stuff about taxes today. So let's get to the show. We're here with Sean Cronin of Cronin and Cronin. Uh, Sean, I gotta say, you are one of my favorite people in the industry. You, you. you really are. Uh, when I met you, I thought you were like 21, and then I, I, I found out your accomplishments, and I'm like, is he 50? I, what is he? Um, but you are certainly, you know, at the top of the game, and I, I don't, I respect you very much. I appreciate that. I'm young at heart, Devin. You young are. Heart. You are. And, uh, you know, we're here today to talk about property tax. Kind of sounds boring, but really intricate and actually really interesting stuff. So tell me about what a property tax lawyer does. So it, it does sound boring. It is a little boring, but it's very important, especially here on Long Island. Um, property tax lawyers that do what I do is that when we come in, we try to get the property taxes at the correct amount for property owners so it's sustainable for them to operate and run their properties at, at the appropriate margins. So we come in, town says the property is worth X for tax purposes. We show our analysis as to why it's worth higher or lower, or I'm sorry, lower, and then we negotiate a value that we can settle upon and have the appropriate tax burden. But a lot of times it is too high because, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, the tax brackets or the, the tax structure started 6,000 years ago? Property tax goes back to the time of Egyptians. So yeah, in, in Long Island, it's been here forever, but it's, it's always been a stable source of revenue. So you've always had assessments on Long Island, but many of the towns, as you say, have not done revaluations in decades. So they have these old assessments on them that have not been updated and really need to be looked at on an annual basis. So for homeowners, they could have owned their home for 30 years and be paying way more taxes than they should have. Can you like backtrack what you were paying more or can it, is it only start from there and maybe you can get reassessed and save money from that point on? So you have to file each year to protect your rights. So you can't go backwards and unless there's an error and that's pretty rare. So you have to file each year to protect your rights and then you preserve your rights to do the analysis and go back and, and obtain refunds for the time period where you overpaid. Now you focus on commercial and that's, that's your expertise. If I'm a commercial building owner of, or I'm a commercial developer, when do I want to call you? you? When you're looking at the property, we have clients that we've represented for decades that when they're just looking at a property, they pick up the phone and say, what's the property tax burden like in this area? What are the relevant dates? What should I be doing from the outset? Because sometimes you're surprised there's certain areas that even if you build a property efficiently and set the right number, taxes are still very, very high because of the tax rate in that area. Other areas, it's the opposite. It has a lower tax burden, and then sometimes that's because there's a lot of commercial development there in that area. So we have our, our clients who are sophisticated call us even when they're looking at something before they even sign the contract. So here on Long Island, I feel like we have the highest property taxes in the nation. I don't know if that's the truth, but I know it hurts. And... Uh, why is that? So it's a couple things. We do have very high taxes. Nassau County, by any metric, is in the top three or four each and every year. Suffolk County, everyone says, well, Suffolk County is not so bad. Uh, the taxes are a little bit lower. Suffolk County only looks good when you compare it to Nassau. So other people in the rest of the country look at Suffolk County. It's usually in the top 10 or 12 each year. So it's very, very high. Um, the big driver is the school taxes. We're very fractured on Long Island. There's 124 school districts on Long Island alone. And then there's a number of special districts and other items on top of that. So the fractured nature of Long Island and the big driver though really is those 124 school districts, but we also have very good schools. So that's the trade-off is that people want those, those expert schools, but they also don't want to have to pay the high school taxes. So here in Suffolk County, you know, I'm born and raised Hop Hog and I've always known Hopog to have decent tax uh, taxes compared to Nassau County and Suffolk County or the rest of Suffolk County, and that's because of the Hopog Industrial Park. Right. We have a ton of businesses here, a ton of um, large buildings here. 
explain how that affects everybody else in the hop hog area. Yeah, so you have a lot of business here and you have a lot of valuable commercial properties. So they're gonna pay a significant portion of the tax burden. When you don't have that, when you have an area that's struggling, you have those people, their values are lower and also people are gonna invest in that community less. So a good example is Wyandanche. Wyandanche, people weren't really investing. Fortunately, the Wyandanche rising came in, but that was only with the assistance of an IDA. But before that, people said the taxes are very high. Why do I want to take that risk when I can take a safer place somewhere else and put my money there? So you really need to have an area where the higher the commercial developer uh, developing density is, then that'll probably drive the tax rate a little bit lower. And you said the, the scary word IDA. For a lot of people, they hear that and they think, oh, this is bad. But for you and I in the industry, we know that it's critical for economic development. Without it, these projects won't happen. Um, we won't be able to grow. Get into a little bit about the bad stigma behind the IDA and why it's actually an incredible resource that, that we should continue to use. It's amazing the amount of misconceptions out there with IDAs right now. And the biggest example was Amazon last year when they said, they're going to get $3 billion in revenue. Why don't we put that somewhere else? And of course, they didn't come. And we didn't get $3 billion to put somewhere else because they were tax breaks. It's a lose-lose. Yeah, they only come if, if they come in and start giving jobs and developing. And then those are the breaks they get on the taxes, not money as a handout. Same thing is true on Long Island. You talk, I just talked about Wyandanche Rising for a second. That area that they had was creating very little revenue as far as taxes. They came in and said, we're going to grow these apartments in this retail component and they increased the taxes tremendously. Did they get a break as to where those taxes were going to be? Yes, yeah, scaled in over time, but it's far more than they would have ever collected if it remained the way it was. And then at the end of it, they're going to have be paying the full tax burden. So it, after they phase in, they will be paying tremendously more than they ever would have. Same thing's true for areas around Konkuma Hub and elsewhere, but the IDAs of can't tell you, and you know just as well as I do, how many developers say, I won't do the project unless there's an idea. And the reality is the area will, or the project won't pay taxes on the front end, but they'll pay a large amount on the back end. And it's not like the town or county or whatever area it's in is losing income that they would have had. The only income they're losing is actually the income on the back end. No, and that's, and that's a lot of the diligence that I'm involved in is that the clients want to show that if the project doesn't happen, this is the taxes that are being collected now. And then if it does happen, here are what it's going to be raising up to ultimately. And it's always an increase over what the first starting number is. And that's a benefit to the community. One of the other reasons that a lot of these projects never come to fruition is you have school districts coming out and, and saying, you know, I don't want more students. The taxes aren't going to cover more students but it's false. You know, Stony Brook did their uh, study and they showed that for every, I believe it was 10 or 11 units built of multifamily, you get one student and that's over a 10 year period. We're losing students left and right on Long Island throughout the school districts. There is no burden on them. Right. It's a false, false statement and it's a false misconception. But get into a little bit about the, the tax ramifications of that and losing out on those projects versus are we overcrowding the school districts? No, oh, you haven't seen it. I think Avalon Bay did a study, too, of their impact as far as how many school children is minimal. Um, even the Stony Brook study, is, it was an excellent job. They really did a great deal of research, and it came out and with all the data and it was very objective. But even that included some garden apartments that is really not the development that's being um, halted. So... I think, if anything, that was the high end of the amount of students that would come in. So you really haven't seen it as far as those items, as, as overcrowding and things like that. So unfortunately, there's been some missed opportunities because of that, because those projects would add a tremendous amount of revenue. Even construction-wise, then you have people in the community who are going to the local restaurants, sales tax, and then ultimately the property tax as well. So one of the big things in the news these days is, is this LIPA thing, and I believe Huntington made a vote uh, two weeks ago. Bring me up to speed on what's going on, because it's big news. Well, the Northport Power Plant, uh, in, which LIPA is paying the taxes on, is the highest paying property tax in the nation. Not on Long Island, not anywhere, in the nation. 
they pay over $80 million in property taxes. Wow. So this has been a litigation that's been high profile for, for a long time. And the reason being that even the settlements that are being proposed are gonna have an impact on the community, um, the Northport School District in particular. So what has ultimately been agreed upon is a, a phase out of their number to the appropriate value or a value that they've compromised on to kind of lessen or soften the impact over a period of time. Um, there was also a component where they're going to pay uh, millions of dollars to the school district during that period of time to help them adjust. But it was one of those situations that I think um, everyone came to the table and, and worked on something that was probably a little uncomfortable for all, all parties, but that's usually a sign of a good settlement and they got it done. So as a resident, why do I want to see that done if I'm living in, in Huntington and if I'm living in, in Northport? Uh, and then as a politician, why do I want to see that done? Okay. This is where I'm going to try not to bore you, Devin. <laughs> so the Suffolk County Tax Act. LIPA had a number of years here. If they were successful, they would have had refunds that would have been tremendous. That Those refunds would have been a line item for every resident of the town of Huntington on their tax bill the following year. Because it would have been millions upon millions of dollars, if they were successful, that would have impacted the entire town. So the town's saying, why are we sharing in this when it really should be the North Park School District that should be paying the bulk of this, this change? North Park School District residents are saying, we bought our property here, we did our homework because we knew our school taxes were lower. We don't care that we're a little bit lower than you. This is what we did, we thought it was gonna be this way and this is what we signed on for. We shouldn't get blindsided by this. So it's really a lot of people who have done all the right things and it's, it was a tough one to find the middle ground as, as I understand it and that's why it took so long. And you, there was one councilman who did not vote in favor of it. I did, I, and I, I've heard different things about it, but it, this was, look, there are a lot of different sides to this. And I think, um, you know, just by the nature of it taking years, but I, I, I think it's best for everyone that it, it wasn't either of the extremes. Had the judge issued a decision, it really could have gone that way and, and then been tied up in litigation even longer if it got appealed. So back to the, the development side, I, I know um, reach out to you as soon as you're looking at a property. Let's say I close on the property. I have plans to demo the property. Mm -hmm. There's certain key dates that I want to demo that property by yeah. to avoid the tax burden for that year. Right. What are those dates? So they're different in different parts of the island, but let's stick in Suffolk County for a second. March 1st is taxable status date each year. You have a, a major construction on that property, say it's worth $10 million. If you demolish it, on February 28th, you will not get taxed that year as far as having a building on the property. If you wait two days later and demolish it on March 2nd, doesn't matter. It was there on March 1st, you're gonna get taxed the whole year as if you had a full building. So it's really critical that you know those dates as far as when the building is, it's called taxable status date. And that's the, what's in existence at the property as of that date is the critical item. And is there paperwork that I need to file with or you need to file for me prior to that or just make sure that building comes down before that taxable date? Well, it should come off as an operation of law, but look, you have a lot of hardworking people in each of the assessor's office and sometimes they might not get to the property every single year. So you want to document it yourself and be aware and file a grievance to protect your rights too. So they've got a, an, an envious task as far as the incredible assessment roles in each town. I mean, take Brookhaven, for example. It's larger than Nassau County, some people don't even realize. So they've got to cover all that ground and do it as of that March 1st date. So sometimes things you, you want to help them out as much as you can. Taxes. We got crazy taxes here. Are they ever going to stop increasing? It, it's unlikely. Um, you know, New York passed the 2% tax cap which is actually a, a cap on the levy, not, uh, it's not a strict 2% on your tax rate. Um, at the time, and he's actually got it on his website, this was passed in 2012, Governor Cuomo said that he did a study as if it was passed 10 years earlier, the billions of dollars it would have changed. So the cat's already out of the bag a little bit and whether it's inflation or, or budgets going up, it's hard to see them go in the other direction um, unless you have an extreme example in a certain area. Um, when Jake's 58 came into Islandia, that cut into the taxes a little bit in that particular village and their village taxes went down, but you're not having a casino open up everywhere. So I, I, 
it's highly unlikely. And, and now you've had COVID come in, which is a whole nother element into play. So I actually just uh, saw the Shinnecocks are looking at potentially opening up a casino and uh, are trying to work something out with Hard Rock. Are the reservations paying property taxes? No. No. So that's, that's not going to be. So, so that's answered. kind of just a, a burden on the area, or it could be a good thing depending on how you look at it. Um, yeah, that creates tourism and things like that, but but not a direct benefit as far as the property taxes. Okay, okay. COVID, it's affected every walk of life. It's affecting every industry uh, a lot negatively. There's actually some positively. What's the effect on, on property taxes with COVID right now? So in Suffolk County each year, the, the grievance day is in May. And COVID comes and people are out of their offices. People need to sign papers to have their taxes grieved. And, and it was a, a Herculean effort by everyone involved, politicians who, who really tried to give everyone access to grieve their taxes. Um, it was really nice to see that everyone stepped up to do that. So number one, they want to make it work, the politicians, as far as this thing. But what else came out was that they wanted tax payment, uh, property owners wanted their tax bill dates extended. And there's competing agendas. On the one hand, the politicians wanted to work with them to pay the proper amounts. But on the other hand, they were saying, we need this money to operate. So it's really difficult as to what's going to happen going forward. So, so that was all worked out during that time period. But going forward, we talked about school budgets earlier. The amount of PPE equipment, um, the plastic partitions, the extra teachers so that you can have smaller classes and distance learning, um, Chromebooks and everything else that they have. It's, school budgets are certainly going to be affected and to what degree, we don't know, but to your point as far as taxes going down in the future, I, I think in this upcoming budget year, I, I think if anything, it's going the other way. Two things guaranteed in life death and taxes and i got to tell you there's there are certain property sectors that were hurt more than others um hotels catering facilities occupancy went down overnight and they still have their property tax still other property tax events got canceled you know for all those months and even now people aren't gathering in large groups and can't legally of, of a, after a certain size so they're not having the same revenue they still have to pay their property taxes um retail retail was starting to hurt tremendously before this i mean the amount of bankruptcies that have come out of this since COVID started and those weren't because COVID came and just knocked them out they were starting to go down that road because of the amazon and other items this so was just the cherry on top it really was and it was the last push and now it's it's really hurting so i mean we talked about property tax generally as far as a stable source of revenue one of the reasons is because it's difficult to evade as you said, all these people, even with these hardships, they still have to pay their tax bills, and those are large items for them now. You see anybody taking out Amazon? You see e-commerce slowing down, or industrial is just going to stay on fire and continue to, to rise? It seems, especially these large distribution centers, seem to be coming up more and more. Walmart's now competing. Um, I know we've represented another lo uh, number of large big box stores where they're now thinking of doing half retail and, and make all the back end a distribution center um, or maybe even all of it at this point. So we're seeing changes, um, but even even in the office world now, we're seeing some of our office clients convert office to industrial because of the demand. So yeah, I don't I don't see it changing very much. I think it's, it's going that way. I, mean, I don't think there's much that's gonna stop it. So if we wanna talk taxes with you, if we've got a property and, and we wanna reach out how do we get to you you can email me you can come to our website um, it, you can call us anytime um, we have so much of this data at our fingertips as far as what the taxes are going to be uh, on, a, on a property currently whether they're high whether they're low some properties have been actively grieved some haven't so call us and we'll go through it all with you sean i appreciate it thank, thank you very much thank you Devin.